VBS is so, so important. We love VBS. We know that not only is it a fun week for kids, but it is an important week for kids because they are, some of them for the first time, here's the life changing message of Jesus. I, when the team serving at VBS was called into the ministry during VBS. So VBS matters for so many reasons. And you guys know that because you're here. So I have, I got pictures, I got videos, I have a whole list of things. So get ready. I know it's the end of the day, it's the end of like two days for you guys. Your brain can take a little bit more in bronze. So if you are the director in charge, the first section is for you. Other people, we get other sections, but tip number one, order early. Things sell out. Um, so I would typically start the day that BBS ended, plan actually a little bit before because I started promoting at the last day of BBS, um, but plan early. Take a really good inventory of what you have. Okay, so I ordered this many pencils. I had this many left over at the end from giveaways or this many too few. That is going to be my, I made a spreadsheet. Actually, I made it just a paper. And sometimes it was just a Sharpie on paper that I found. Uh, but that is how I'm gonna start planning what I'm ordering for next year. Order as soon as it comes out. I would even use my budget money well and be like, could you put half of it on whatever I have left and this year and the rest just charge to next year. Um, and hopefully they'll work with that. So order early, things do sell out. Um, if you didn't order early or you suddenly had a ton more kids, if you need extra supplies, check the BBS group. They really encourage people, if you're not a part of it, if you're first time, answer is BBS discussion group on Facebook. People will sell and they encourage you just to handle it that way because if you are taking your leftover t-shirt that you're returning them to Answers in Genesis, there's that whole processing time versus, oh, you need shirts? I got 20, you wanna just pay me for them? I'll fit them to you. They encourage that, it gets it in the right hands. Um, inventory, everything. I keep a clipboard with me at BBS and I write what is working well, what is not working. I'm inventorying, we ran out of this, we had too many of this. Plan accordingly to that. We wanna be good stewards of whatever budget we have, um, whether it's a time or a little, we wanna be good stewards of it. So try to hit that sweet zone of having the right amount of stuff. I like to have a master to-do list of all of those tasks that need to be done. Because by the time we've done it for 50 years, we might forget something because we're just so used to doing it. <laughs> um, so I have a master to-do list of all the tasks, every single task. Well then we need to divide it out by a month because have anyone else gotten into like two months before BBS and realized I did not do something really important that needed to already be done? It's gonna happen. But if you've made your calendar, whether it's paper or digital, however you like to calendar, you have it divided by months, so three months before, I've got to do this. Six months before, it has to be this. It keeps you organized, helps you from forgetting things, helps you from keeping, keeping things from falling through the cracks. Um, as far as dates, I have found it to be a big win that I see my videos on the exact same week every single year. So in my town, uh, in my previous church, there was a, we did a town festival, and it was always the third Saturday in July. So our BBS, always followed that. So it was the week after that third Saturday in July. Why did I do this? Because families could then start to plan accordingly. So if you're creating an amazing VBS that they have to come to, they're not gonna wanna miss, they're gonna start planning their vacations accordingly. If they know it is always the third week in July or the first week in June, whatever it is, they're gonna plan accordingly. It helps volunteers scheduling on their vacation days. If you have those amazing volunteers who will take their vacation day from work to work at BBS, they can plan better. Um, if you're not doing that, if you'd like to rotate it around or it depends, announce it as early as possible. Lock in those dates because vacations, work trips, all of those things happen real soon. Have some work days for BBS. Do you guys do work days? I love work days and I got so much smarter at them. My first few work days weren't very effective. It was people saying, okay, now what do I do? Now what do I do? So now I go in with a plan, and I have things prepped out in different rooms, through sections, and this is the plan for this table, and this is this. I have a list of more things that can be completed in that work day, because sometimes people just show up, and you didn't know they were showing up, and you have a task. So make a task a clear list. And I like to always have a teenage work day. They're off, they need service hours, I don't know. I assume all states have something like beta. Kentucky has something called beta club, and they literally have to do 15 service hours every semester. Community service, but church camp. So I just sign all the forms. You prep for BBS. And um, we have pizza, because it makes them come. And I have a bunch of tasks that I know my teeth can do. 
Um, so maybe the more physical ones, like climbing on the ladder to hang all the flowers on the wall that the grown-ups don't want to do. Um, decoration prep, stuffing goodie bags. They'll do that for me. Any task you can think of, it gives them a chance to involve, but you also don't have to just give them busy work. Know your teens. What are they capable of? In our small church get-together, if you're in there, um, we talked about empowering younger teens to serve. At a small church, you have the luxury of getting to know them on a personal level. So I knew my 15-year-old was extremely strong in her faith, so she could lead the preschool class as a lead teacher. You might not be able to know that. Maybe someone on your leadership team can know where those teens are at exactly. Can you empower them to do more than just the busy work? Give them some of the heavy lifting. You might be surprised at how well they'll step up to that. Set up. How many of you have to wait until church ends on that Sunday to set up for the next week? Super fun, right? And then how many of you are also the last person there? And you got so tired and physically everything hurt, you just went home, you're like, I'll come early in the morning. You're my people. Um, start setting up as early as you can. I know that it's not always possible depending on what's happening in your church. If you have a preschool or other groups use it, Figure out what can be put up before. Could ceiling decorations be hung up and not be a bother? Could you have teens come in two weeks before and do that? It builds a little excitement maybe before. Um, how many people can you get to come to set up? We would do a pizza for lunch. Everybody come. And so we had a lot of older people at our church who wouldn't always want to stay for the full day. But if I could get them for 10 minutes to start carrying decorations, like, it was a bad logistic. You had to go downstairs to be able to go upstairs. There was a lot of stairs. And when you do that 50 times in BBS setup day, it hurts. So if I could get my church for 10 minutes after church to move the choir chairs and bring down cardboard, it seemed to me so much work. So empower your church to come help you, even if it's five minutes, even if it's 10 minutes. But encourage them to save for pizza and help the full day. Have those areas labeled. I had different areas of the church that needed things moved to. Throughout the week, I would have it set up, organized. I used the hallway. Kids, you get to stare at BBS prep stuff while you're going to Sunday school today. You'll deal with it. I had clear signs, this needs to go to snacks. This needs to go to the sanctuary. That way, people weren't looking to find me because I was not a good delegator for many. I'm still not, like being honest. Um, but on BBS setup day, everyone's like, okay, Amber, what do we do? Amber, what do we do? Where is Amber? And you get pulled 20 million different directions. So labeling things, even just writing with a Sharpie and a piece of paper and taping it on there, huge help. Um, so labeling all that stuff, assigning tasks as you can. If you are super warheads and you can think a written list of things and get teen, teen areas, all right, snacks, here's what you're to make. That will take love to all of you and make that up feel so much sweeter. Set up, I usually get plenty of volunteers, but you know where I never ever if the 17 years of ministry had good help for? Clear no and Lizzie Dare Down. How many of you guys are in the safe boat? No one stays. Um, as best as you can, try to get a crew there for cleanup, or you are there for hours and hours, and sometimes you want to cry. We did something last year that was so effective. We just wrote on post it every task that had to be done. And we laid them on the edge of the sanctuary and made an announcement. We said, before you leave, if you could grab a post-it and do that one thing on that post-it, that would really help us. And so we had been a ditch tied it so we would print them out every year. Yeah. Out, but it worked. It was really a great idea. In case you guys can hear, they put every task, individualize the task on a post-it, put them on the sanctuary apron of the stage. All right, so you take one post-it, do one task before you leave. Awesome idea. Yeah. It was a BBS Sunday afterwards. And stay so much and ask everybody to stay for a certain amount of time. Not even that. So BBS lunch, and they don't get their fried chicken until they help find that right. I like it. This, this several years ago, I just started telling my worker eight weeks before BBS that BBS was the over and sell the church look exactly like it did before they did stuff. And I would assign groups, and everybody knew exactly where they were supposed to go, what they were supposed to help tear down. And we stayed in it. We were always out of there. Our BBS is at 12. Kids are going by 12, what are you, 30? We were used to out of there by the winter. And the church would be planned. It's supposed to be everything they just put in the room was where it will add and gone from. If you're not intentional with getting tear down, you'll find yourself there for hours by yourself. 
Um, that was always an area of weakness for me. I didn't make sure I had people. You just assume, right, that your, your people that have been there all week will give you 20 minutes. Don't assume, make sure you have them. Um, another great idea for those leaders is a special snack area. How many of you have a special snack lounge area and a little break room for your leaders? Um, do they get more than kids' snacks? I'm just completely, this is another great way that you can get some maybe of your older members that can't participate in BBS, so they still get to be involved when they make their world famous craft, you know, whatever they make, cookies, sandwiches. Um, we had one lady who would always make pigs and blankets, and that was like the day she did it on one day, and we were like, yes, it's pigs and blanket day, just for the workers. Um, we would allow our teens to be part of it too, the teens that were serving, so they felt like really big stuff that they got to go in and eat the leftover pizza, and the other kids had to have snacks. Um, Really good homemade food, like good cookies, um, coffee, whatever the beverages of choice are. So find out, ask your people, hey, what's your drink this week? What's your drink? Make sure you have it. And if you have a multi-floored building where the layout's really hard, consider the mobility of these people. So if your craft ladies are up on a different floor, are they gonna be able to make it down to staff? Do they have the time and the schedule? Or should you use some of your younger volunteers that could be your runner and they're gonna take up a snack assortment to them maybe at multiple points during the day? Think about the mobility of your people. And then have a follow-up plan. How many of you guys have a follow-up plan? Okay, well then, how many of you guys know the why of a follow-up plan? Okay, I'm gonna cast the why before because it's just another thing to do, except what is your purpose of BBS? And this could depend you know, it's gonna differ for every church. Your church, the purpose might be to gain new families at your church. The purpose of yours might be strictly to tell boys and girls in your community about Jesus. It might be a soft introduction to the church, whatever your purpose is, that's our goal. That's why we have BGS. We don't have it just because we always have it. If so, come talk to me, we'll rethink your purpose. But your follow-up plan is how are we continuing this? Because VBS, awesome, these kids came and they had fun, but that shouldn't be the end. So if your goal is to attract new families, well, what are you doing to connect with those families? What is your plan in place? Are you ever gonna see these moms and dads again? Or are you just hoping that they come back next year? If we really wanna attract families to our church, are we connecting with them? And that plan needs to be in place well before BBS starts. So if my goal was to attract new families to my church, I'm gonna make sure that mom and dad hear from me before BBS and during BBS. And I'm probably gonna invite them back to something family friendly later. That all should be planned out before BBS happens. So BBS happens on the closing ceremony. Moms and dads, we're inviting you back to this. And hey, did you know that we have this event coming out that would be a great time for you to come? And because you had the contact info from the forms, you're going to snail mail or email or your pigeon all the information to them. You plan out your points of contact for the week through the year. You don't want to be a nuisance. You don't want them to unsubscribe to your email. They possibly will ignore it anyways because they get so many emails. But how are you connecting with them? And your purpose is just to share the gospel with boys and girls. Well, do you have resources to maybe send them home with? Maybe giving them a Bible, maybe they don't have access to it. What is your follow-up plan? I like to send a postcard afterwards. We are so glad you're here. It's just a simple reminder that we are here every Sunday, every Wednesday, come back and see us. I also, in my follow-up plan, as part of next year, so then I have learned when I'm going to invite them to come back to next year's VBS. I like to take a picture on Thursday. Everybody's wearing their cold t-shirt, big picture, big stage, and I turn that into the first postcard that they receive for me in the February to March range. Because then they get to get mail. Everybody likes some happy mail. And they get to find themselves on there. There's me, oh, it was so much fun. I've got the date left in, the registration form is live by that point, so moms and dads can go ahead and start. So what is your follow-up plan? Are you being intentional with it? <clears throat> so those are some quick director tips. Um, and just know that an organized director is an effective director. If you are not organized, if you don't have a plan, if you can't find your stuff, um, you're gonna struggle. For instance, your craft room. How many of you guys have a really clean craft slash resource room right now? Really? Okay, so everybody else, look at the people next to you and see if they wanna come with being yours. Um, <laughs> Because I was like never in that category. I would get a tweet right before the first work day and then BBS and then I said the rest of you're trying to get a clean back before. But it's important to know what you have, what resources you have, how you're gonna use them to be the best stewards of everything that you have. 
organization is your friend, even if it's hard. Now we're gonna move on to some must-have supplies. We like the things in children's ministry. The number one thing I like to share with everybody is a tape called Marvelous Tape, except take out the R, it's actually Marvelous. So it's M-A-H-V-E-L-O-U-S. It's gonna change your life. No more blue painter's tape that doesn't hold anything up. No more putty that leaves putty things. It's amazing. Um, you can get it on Amazon in colors even, or white. And a little piece of tape about this big will actually, like one in each corner, will hold up a poster on concrete blocks for the entire week of EBS. It, it's amazing. And <laughs> trust me, like, it's gonna change your life. You do not have to go through and like reap the dust posters every single day. My first church, do what? It does. In 12, 13 years of using it, two times have I killed the paint. And that's because teenagers got a little rough. It is safe on paint. Um, it was designed by a teacher who understands the need to hold up the poster, but it's really good. It doesn't mess up your walls. It's amazing. Um, it's so fun. It's not two sided, so you gotta make the little loop, um, or you have the, you know, ugly tape lines, um, but it is so good. Yes. So it's marvelous, but without the R. Marvelous. M A H V E. L-O-U-S. You can get packs of it on Amazon. So we did use it, and we found out you're actually supposed to twist. It was, was like, ours was falling down when you just moved it. You might go on YouTube, because you're actually supposed to twist. Twist. Okay, and it makes the extra strong. That's how cool it is. It has its own YouTube. So I, so, 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 so. I mean, a YouTube song. So look it up. I got her twisted, and honestly, without twisting, it worked at my, it worked at my church. So maybe twisting works even better. Good tip. Um, the next one is also going to change your life. Do you have the blessing of having an understanding janitorial staff? I hear laughter. Is that a no? <laughs> well, I believe it or not, I did. I actually, one year, we had a big slime mess in the church because the, the tea was supposed to gen wing for it on me, but it said he sloshed. So then we had a strawberry jello flavored, colored slime all over the church carpet. And our custodian was about 75 to 80. And he's like, why are you cleaning that up? No, I'll take care of it. And I love it because he got it. He got the importance of BBS. But I know that not everybody does. And I, I'm sorry if you don't. But this is going to be your church's friends. I am all about making a mess with confetti and glitter. I love it. Um, I did a huge thing at Easter where we had a balloon drop full of confetti, and then I had all my kids go through the middle section. All of my teens circled them with confetti cannons, and one, two, three, they went everywhere. It was amazing. But not everyone wants to deal with two weeks of cleanup. You get that. So this is a confetti streamer. You have a little pipe cleaner, and then you have a tissue paper, and the streamers are inside. So you put it on your finger. I like to twist so that it doesn't come off. But I'm gonna switch hand, actually, because I like my right hand better. <coughs> All right, so I put it on the inside of my hands. I'm then going to gently rip off the tissue paper. This is a pre-part that you do, like right before. And then are you ready? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing about. I don't need to ask Sorry, I, kinda, I think you got hit in the face. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> It was worth it because, look at this, look at that. And then you just pull it back in, right, right. I wish, I wish I created this. Um, this is on Amazon. They make all sorts of colors. Um, this is the multicolor pack. They make single colors. You just look up confetti streamers. Now you do have the children that will be like, and they run and they grab it and they rip it off. So there is some cleanup that if you, you just gotta pay attention, but like, look at that. Look at that clean up and the impact that it makes. So, confetti streamers, it'll change your life. A must have for me is also great everywhere. Yeah, I have a megaphone. Um, recreation, if you do it outside in a gym, a megaphone is a must have, or your leader is gonna be a little hoarse by the end of the week. It's also great for game time and the assignment option. But and they get these batteries. Um, a fun tip, if you have a budget and you're budget conscious, Kohl's tends to have these in the pre-Christmas thing. 
So if you're shopping after Christmas, where you have some Kohl's cash for all the thing around Christmas time, that's one of the novelty gifts that they have. This is from Kohl's about 12 years ago. There you go. Um, another fun toy my son is going to show you. This is something really cool. It's called Airzuka. Airzuka. What? Like Brazuka. What do I call it? Airzuka? <laughs> yeah, it's an air cannon. I'll um, concentrate air. You call back on the sis. <laughs> you can go walk into the other sections of taste too. Um, so I use these honestly just for some fun in the pre-service, maybe air during some dance time. Um, right? But like it packs a little punch. It's also if you're doing minute to minute games up on stage. Uh, competition, you can make them try to knock down a cup tower. If you like to feed your games, build the Tower of Babel. The first one to knock down the tower wins. It's just a lot of fun. I do have a, this is a Miss Amber toy. It's so I don't get to touch the roll because they want to touch it. <laughs> Maybe how much is he worth? <laughs> but seriously, you will have no shortage of people who want to do this. If you buy your Zuga, guess where you can find it? Amazon. Uh, it's 25 bucks. And it, I was a little worried that it wouldn't last long. You look at the plastic covering and I'm like, ooh, it's not going to live forever. That would be, I mean, I've had one 10 year old and it's still, it's still going. Yeah. So they're, it's worth it. I will also make classroom buckets. The Dollar Tree is my second favorite place. So every class will have a bucket. They're a little clumsier now. Yeah, sorry. It's just what it is. Um, we traditional, we have pews. So every pew at the start with the tea, they have their bucket. In the bucket, they can hold their lanyards, put it back in the bucket afterwards. They have a clipboard with the class roster. I you might I'm I was old school pen and paper. We check in this way. I like to really pay attention to all of those special concerns. So if you have an allergy, you have a pretty star sticker on your lanyard. It also goes on here. That way everybody knows. If you are in no photo, you have this. It's the in custody concerns. You want to put this on here. You as the leader, the registration person doesn't need to be the only one who knows this information. Everybody needs to know that you cannot take a picture of said child. It needs to be visible everywhere. So they have their clipboard with all of the roster information, which I would change out every day if you get a fresh roster every day. And then they get a little zipper bag with all of the things they might need, like band-aids. I love the break open ice packs. I kind of had a rule at church. I don't give you any medication because you need a scorn because you never know when a kid is going to react to something. So we will put a cold paper towel on it. You can have an ice pack or you can have a band-aid. If it's worse than that, we're calling mom. So a little pack with band-aids, um, break open ice packs are great. Dollar Tree sometimes has them, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it's hard to find those, but they are invaluable. Some tissues, you know, sanitizer, Sharpies, pencils, pens, just a little emergency pack for anything that needs. And then I would put anything in their basket that needed to go out that day. So maybe your fifth, sixth grade class was super awesome yesterday and they earned an extra special treat. So I'm gonna put some suckers in this teacher's basket. They get to do it. They can carry it around with them. Anything the kids leave behind, you know, they take out a shirt. I've seen some churches will use the big rubber bank totes. totes. Whatever works for you, but a basket for them to take open or take around is super, super helpful. Um, I think another must have supply is labeled boxes. It can be a homemade label, but boxes labeled for everything, where they're going, organize yourself really, really well. Um, so yeah, real quick, anybody have any other must-have supplies? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I really like the clipboards that have the open, like you could open the clipboard up so that way extra papers or like panties and things can get put inside and then there's a spot for a pencil. You can also get some stick-on pockets. So you could have a stick-on pocket if you can find those or Dollar Tree is your only source. You can Amazon some stick-on pockets. <laughs> One thing we do with the no photograph is we give a different colored lanyard for that child so that if the photographers walk around taking pictures, they see that they know not to think that they can. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I come from a small church, but I found that a lot of times mom and dad don't understand that question as well. 
And so I would go and talk to them like, hey, I saw that Billy is no photograph. I just wanted to let you know, this is how we use our photos. And when they realize that their kid won't be in any of the slides, so a picture, they're like, oh, you can take pictures. Um, so sometimes explaining that too, just so you understand what you agreed to. In our baskets for the pre primary Jump ropes, yes. Or some bubbles, you know. So it's good. Oh, to hold on a line. That's good. That's good. All right. Next, we're going to get creative. And Reed is going to tell you about this. So you're going to be wondering why I have a pizza hat on. Watch it. Good question. <laughs> so, at PPS, especially recreation, you might see someone walk around with a pizza hat or some other silly hat. And the reason is that is because it helps kids who know what Bible works. So, every day when they get up and go to Bible school before, before stuff, they'll memorize a specific Bible verse. It's different every day. When they go to the first one wearing a hat like this, they'll tell them the Bible verse and they give his a candy. Because kids love candy. I like candy too, but in case you didn't know that, kids love candy. Yes, <laughs> candy is mud. It helps keep God, God's word in your mind. Words. <laughs> so, man, this is the silly hat challenge. If you find someone wearing a silly hat, your teens love this. They will fight over who gets to be the silly hat person. Just give them a bucket of candy through the day um, and they say the verse. I would award a kid just for trying because it's not about perfection. It is about, hey, you tried. I don't care if you tried two minutes ago to learn it. You are still trying to learn it. Um, again, Amazon, pizza hat, taco hat, crab hat, the shark hat. You can theme it with so many things. I had a chicken hat. Like, it's fun. Um, we would do it at recreation because there's always those kids who don't want to play the games. Uh, we were outside, outside July, Kentucky. It gets warm. Um, so out at recreation, that transition from recreation to snack, maybe if you had some downtime in music, or uh, music or crafts, that's a great time to have your silly hat challenge at uh, pre-service time. A great way to maybe involve some of your older workers too in their game to wear a silly hat. Sit in that chair somewhere on a hallway, maybe passing by. It's something that they can do. They can interact, they can form the relationship, but then it's practicing having you guys wear it in their arm. Do I see a question over here? Okay, more creative ideas. We did something for a couple of years. Some years it worked, some years didn't. It's called the Being Good Award. This was a piece of paper that I designed and printed out and copied millions of copies, I think. And I would pass them out to leaders that they have a kid being a really good listener or a really good friend or something like that. And they can cash it out at the beginning, like before we started the closing assembly. And I would have them boxes full of trinkets or candy or whatever. Um, some things that worked great, it could do a great job if you've got the swirly class and not everybody's listening. So when you walk around the copy, get a word, okay, I'll start listening now because I could get a piece of candy. I'm not above writing to be you listen. But flip side, then it got too much. It got too popular. And so I would have kids with like 12 of these and I'm like giving out too many. And it was taking 15 minutes for kids to pick out a piece of candy and go sit down so we could get started. So I did do away with them. Um, who knows, maybe I'll bring it back in a few years, but it's an idea that may work in your situation. We started doing that because um, if you can start first at the very beginning of BBS, my leaders give out, we have good behavior coins, those are mm -hmm. plastic coins, I've got a five million of them now. Um, and in the beginning of the week, like on Monday and Tuesday, they would give out a lot more because if they're caught being good or helpful, then they will do anything and everything they can to be good the rest of the week to get them. And then we take for it off to give so much. But we have a BBS store, which we called it a different name with a B. Like last year, it was the grow room mm -hmm. where the king's treasures were. And, you know, Oriental drain, cheap junk. You know, that they love money. <laughs> they do. They love it. And they could come with their cool life. And we had a five point spending limit our day because we were getting at low level. And we even had some time it was open before BBS started every day. And then afterwards on Monday on, not on Friday. And and then for our daycares that came because they would come right before BBS and leave right after. We had a special time built in um, on one of the days where they could spend all their forts. So like, grand, it works because they will they will just do anything to this good one. Yeah, yes, yeah, they will. Um, I found lots of places in my town would be willing to give me stuff, either a donation or a discount. 
So in my town, you're going to be really jealous, but we have a local donut. <laughs> they look really good. Like funky donuts too. So I called one day and I asked them, hey, I, I don't, I don't like just asking for donations and like you either donate or could I purchase any gift cards? And I was able to purchase for 20 bucks, a hundred free donut gift cards. So you're supporting a local business. You're making a good, you know, church connection with the business. And then who doesn't want a free donut from an amazing donut shop? So think of things like that, that can really help your budget. But then it's also, you know, it's fostering some, some good community relationship. Um, some church, some businesses have a standard form you have to fill out. Some of it, you just need to know the people, but what's in your area that could be a wish for your PBS? Instead of traditional groups, how many of you do a traditional BBS where like Bob is the teacher of this group and Bob teaches the bike study and all of that and they're with Mr. Bob all day? Do you do the traditional like that? Or do you rotate to the Bible teacher? Rotate. Okay, well never mind. You guys know that tip. The other group didn't. Less rooms to decorate that way, I think. How many of you do the drama? Do you do the full drama? How many of you do the DPD? How many of you do the three-person drama? How many of you don't do the drama? Okay, these are other drama you see you could listen to, but if you don't do the drama, you're in the same boat as me. And I like the, like the thoughts of it, but I didn't always have the manpower, well, never have the manpower to do it. So I would get really creative because I like the fun aspect of it. Kids, kids like the fun, they like the silly, there's a purpose in it. But we didn't have the manpower to do it, so we started doing it ourselves, my husband and I. We have a little filming studio in our basement, like it's all in the moon stuff. It's not like an actual filming studio. <laughs> but we would make videos based on the theme. Last year for uh, Keepers of the Kingdom, my husband, who is all for being silly, donned a blonde curly girl's wig, and he was King Reginald III. And King Reggie interacted with the kids. So he would greet them, his royal message every morning, we pop up the video, and he, like, one day he made the play Simon Says, but King Reggie said it's so, good morrow, peasants, it's time to play a game, King Reggie says, and he would get all into character and interact with the kids through the videos. For Zoomerang, he was an Australian tour guide, but a very bad one. Yeah. Um, and so he, he worked on his accents. He like, researched how to talk in Australian, like how do they say certain letters, it was great. Um, but it was a teaching purpose. Now it was very silly, but it was building for why we were doing it. So every day he would warn us about some crazy animal that we were gonna meet. Now we researched legends, um, mythical Australian animal legends, like on day four, he was warning us about the drop bear. Did you guys talk about the drop bear if you did the ring? Okay, the drop bear is like a koala and it will literally drop from trees. The part we didn't tell the kids is it drops from trees to kill you. We left that part out. But he was warning us about the drop bear. Well, so every day it's some crazy thing and we never saw that crazy thing as we were going on our tour. But then on Friday, he dropped his accent. He's like, I'm sorry. Like I was just trying to pick this really exciting for you guys, but I realize now that God's creation is already exciting when the amazing things that he made. So you can create two minute or under videos Get someone with an iPhone, honestly, an iPhone and a selfie stick is all you need, um, or tripod, and some creativity, you can make them interactive. We would also do stuff where I'm the onstage person. He worked through the day, so he couldn't be there. And we would interact with each other. He was doing a video message or we would, you know, zoom in or whatever. And I also did it with myself one year where I interacted with myself on screen. So just to give you a little taste, this is a little video from Time Lab. I was Dr. I'm a genius. Unfortunately, yeah. you as I received some upsetting emails, tweets, and I wouldn't deny that this was me. It was not me, kids. Like, yes, excuse me, Beth. There's this Miss Amber from Vacation Bible School that she and I are about the same pexit, but I'm not Miss Amber. I'm Doctor. I'm a TBS world renowned jello creator. So I want. to Wash these nasty rumors before they go any further. So I have invited this Amber straight to my show to prove to you that she and them are not the same. So be eternally and welcome me, Miss Amber. Thank you. Then I acted with myself and it was, it was great. <laughs> we also did stuff where we can do our timing when we were writing our scripts. We would time it to where I would ask my husband a question or I would ask myself a question and then I would know how much response time that I have. 
Simple things can make a really big impact. You can do it for a little bit of silliness to engage the kids, or you can use it to continue to do your teaching. Um, now, Reed is going to quickly type about take home bags. You guys love or hate take home bags? <coughs> love, love. The bush? Yeah. He's going to quickly walk you through how we would do our take home bag. And we brought him from. So, I'm assuming the take home bag would be. We use life sacks. So, if they have a take home bag, they use multiple stuff, such as Ages and Genesis, you know, different stuff, like this Battle for True book. Also, fun stuff, sometimes bookmarks. Every day would be a different thing. A bookmark, a pencil, a book, and in the data of all the things. with music. You know, yeah, music. And that little tiny stuff like this. Exploring God's Word, saying. And also, because the kids love it, candy. <laughs> <laughs> it also is, and also, I don't want it, but it's just for fun. The, the daily coins, the daily cards. I actually recreate an actual, I recreate a goodie bag from last year's BBS. It was actual stuff. And I was be from last year, the dragon legend college, the card deep cheer ups, letting you do like, this is dragons and body parts. Your science loving kids love the cards. And also every day afterwards of crafts, they would put your craft in a goodie, put goodie bag. So you leave it in there and they will put your stuff back, stuff it in the goodie bag. Which would be way to get well in my case, the same shoe than to pick up the B. So we would set the main, we had one main hallway and we would divide them by class. I would have someone, it was their job to write the name over all the goodie bags. They have the roster, they set them out under the class sign. That way we know what's going in there. So your crafts never make it to your hands, it goes straight to your goodie bag. Much less stuff leaves, much less stuff gets left at church. Um, then I would have another person, sometimes teens who are kind of in between rotations, would go down for the role and they would have Monday's goodie bag inserts. Any kind of advertisement, flyers, wear your t-shirts tomorrow, all of that stuff goes in your goodie bag. Um, and then I would have, when maybe the teens from rec were done, all right, now your job, go grab the classes stuff, take it to their pews. Because I don't know about you all, but children tend to not remember to take home their things. This alleviated a lot of that for us. Um, just in case you guys didn't talk to the guys at Eddie Gals at Seeds, I love providing kids with music. Now I'm old school, I still have a CD player. We use CDs, they have digital download cards. But here's the best part. One, the best part is that it's scripture, straight getting in their hearts, music helps us remember. But the second best part, did you know that you can email or call them and they have a church to see? Yeah. So if you think it's not in your budget, you're probably wrong. And there might be someone in your church who is willing to pay for this so that every kid, like it's not, as, as often as can be is, it's not just me, right? It's God's word. So think about that. Um, I also make sure on that Friday, we save the date for next year, it is right in that bag. So they know right then. Um, boop, I'm gonna have to speed through, I got like five minutes. The first face that a visitor sees, a kid sees, it's your traffic garden. It's your security, it's your outside, making sure it's a welcoming face. We had an older gentleman who, that's the first face they saw every single year. Make sure it's a happy face. We're excited to see them. Um, the pre-service, you've got about 30 minutes-ish when kids are sitting there before everything gets started. Don't waste that time. You can use that time to build relationships because relationships in ministry are key. You can use that time to pour into them spiritually. Pop up some scripture songs on CD. Maybe you're gonna play some games they made it so easy for you guys this year. You've got countdown videos. You've got worship songs from Seeds. You've got the great Jungle Journey songs. They even have some games, some screen-based games on there. You can make your own, you can buy them. Uh, you could do some Hump Up Jesus dance party. You can have your team there with some upbeat music, shooting kids with the air zooka. Don't waste that time. Have some fun, connect with kids, um, and then teach them about Jesus. Real quick decorating tips um, and Hacks, save your decoration. You know how many years I've used the same pieces of greenery? So many. Um, I have an alligator that's like 12 years old. I have a giraffe with three legs. I still use them. <laughs> decorating in layers, um, a statement piece. So big, it's fun, it's exciting, but you need to have them super big. Last year, I wanted a dragon. I couldn't fit a dragon. Um, so, I just made his head. He was taller than me. He was a six foot tall dragon head. I didn't have to make the whole thing, but it had a really key focal point. I fishing line tied it to the pipe organ uh, to overlook the cape. <laughs> I didn't do this, I didn't get in trouble. It was someone else. 
Um, but it made a big impact. So think, maybe I don't need to make the whole thing. I saw someone else showed me they wanted to do a dragon, but they, no room. So they just did his tail coming out of a cave. So they made a little cave and they had some dragon in. How fun, just a piece of a very large item can make a really big impact. Um, other fun things is if you have the traditional church ceiling that has a little metal track, they make ceiling hooks from Amazon that you can hang the things from there. You're not taping, you're not falling. It's a little plastic hook that you open and you clip on a little metal piece and it holds the things. And then think about doing that because that's time consuming to go up and hang one thing at a time. Well, if you have a metal break and this is those pop together cube things, you know, I'm talking about the storage cubes, the ones that have the grate, spray paint back your color, and you can hang multiple things from there, zip ties, fishy lines, so then you're hanging one piece that has lots of things from it. Saved you some time. Um, promoting, we want to get the word out about our BBS, so how are you doing it? Are you announcing the date at the close of your BBS? Are you advertising year-round? You're using your Easter egg hunt, your fall festival, your Christmas thing. Are you doing yard signs? If you have not gone to Canva, it is my favorite place to play. You can design on Canva and apply for a free nonprofit. You get the full thing as a nonprofit church. It's super awesome. But you can say, oh, I made this pretty yard size, and then click print, and they will print it and ship it. It costs to do that part, but you get yard signs and you can have your people put in the yards, then tell them to bring them back to you, and you get to use that to paint decoration on next year. It's a win-win. Um, does your church have a parade like our church does in summer? Can you advertise for your BBS then? Can you promote at the library? Can you pass out things in school? Are you using word of mouth? If you're creating such an amazing BBS that families plan their vacation around and they're likely going to invite their friends. That I like to track online for just, how did you hear about us? It was never a newspaper ad that my senior leadership insisted I do. No one came from the newspaper ad because people came from word of mouth where they saw advertisements on Facebook. Track and then plan your advertising based on that. Um, competitions. Do you guys do boys versus girls? Yes. Boys versus girls, we love it. Um, my church, we get points for coming, for missions, money donated, for dressing up. Do you do dress up days? Yes. So I would do Wacky Wednesday. Friday was always gonna be the tea day, so your crazy color. Um, I have a grown up who has a garment wrap downstairs full of tutus and capes. And I was shocked to find out that other grown-ups don't have this. <laughs> Weird. But I love it. It makes it so fun. I don't force my grown-ups at VBS to do it, but I highly encourage it. Kind of with like a little bit of like, you're not going to dress up, really? Because if they're dressing up, if they're engaging, if they look a little silly while they're doing the dances, those fifth grade boys that are really hard to reach, they're into it too. Um, my teens, I had the best team of the world. They were all in it. I had boys up on stage doing the dance in the silly outfit. So that is an instant cool factor. If you can get your teens in it, even if they hate it, have them be excited for it because their excitement, even worse, is gonna catch on with the kids and it's gonna instantly be cool. So it would end in a punishment, right? That's the whole purpose of the competition is a punishment. Just a couple of ideas for you. Pie in the face. Um, fun fact, I like to impart this wisdom so you don't make the same mistake. Did you know that spray whipped cream reacts adversely to the oils in your skin? So if you're letting children just attack you with spray whipped cream, you're never getting the smell out. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. It's bad. So you shaving cream, it's gonna burn, but it's much less horrible than the smell of a cream in your skin, I promise. A dumb tank, if you have this face, dumb tank is really fun as a punishment too. We've done an ice bath where we had a leader in a kiddie pool and they got an ice bath dumped on that. Slime is one of my favorite. A nice bucket of slime is great. Uh, I saw people last year doing horn feather with chocolate sauce and feathers. But the way I've done it in the past few years is I don't like to tell them who wins. I reveal to them who wins. So this is, go ahead and hit play because there's a link, a little, a little intro. And my church, the girls had won for the last, I don't know how many years. I was the neutral color because I didn't have a counterpart up on stage. So girls were pink, boys were blue, I was purple. And the color of the pie on my face would be human. So of course we did a stunt kit for Aim Stronghold. So we did a couple of test pies just because we beat them. Not the color. Not the color. And then we called for the royal jester, who was part of stage every week, one of the team, every day. 
And you see my team up there, they're dressed up, they're engaging, uh, they're getting the kids to meet the powder. The Royal Jester has the color of the winning team hidden in his sky. And the kids went crazy. That is Reed jumping up and down. It was the first time he had won since he was like five. Or you never win. Yeah, and they always said I cheated. I didn't cheat. Um, but it is very exciting to do that. Do the competition. Get the five days. It's fun. Um, but then we also went to, they keep screaming because they're so excited. Um, real quick, because I'm technically past time. You want to engage the parents. There are lots of resources for you to support the mom and dad because you know that biblically mom and dad are the ones commanded to lead. They're the ones commanded to be the primary shepherd. So are you trying to resource mom and dad? Are you engaging with them? Are you inviting them, whether they're church members or visitors, to come and get some training, some encouragement, some giving? Are you providing resources? And so, as a nemesis of the tiny enough days, the ministry I worked for was if you were one of like 800 people, you might have gotten the magazine from Rome Recreation, and they are all about the local worldview and foundation and equipping mom and dad. There are tons of things you can give to, to them. Connect with those families, pour into mom and dad, because VBS is amazing and it is awesome, but if you see them one week out of the year, Mm, that's not effective discipleship, which is why God commanded mom and dad to do it. So in closing, the last few things that you have to remember, have a warm and welcoming PBS group. Your tone says everything. I had a kid one time. He wouldn't go back to it ever in church's VBS. Why? He said he felt like he didn't want him there. No one was smiling, no one greeting him. He was miserable. He wouldn't go back. He was a church kid. No big deal. But what if that wasn't? What if that was a kid? One, exposed to Jesus, and they didn't feel loved or welcomed. Make sure it's warm and inviting. Make everything intentional. I don't know what they all say to everyone, but hey, I'll do. <laughs> because they're all the most important. Make everything intentional. Don't waste a minute of your BBS. Have fun. Love these kids with the love of Jesus and pray your BBS out. I'm going to pray over it right now. God, we have so many kids represented today. You know which kids are coming to our BBSs. You know what messages they are going to hear and who needs to love on them. God, equip these leaders, these volunteers with a passion for you. Equip them with everything that they need to make this VBS the best VBS because for a child, it's going to be the most important one ever. Thank you for letting us partner with you and we're in the kingdom. In your name, we pray.